Hey, I'm Mike from the Logan and the Hobo RV Adventure channel and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about a recent trip we took to the Jawbone Canyon BLM area uh, just north of Mojave, California. Let me just wrap up my morning Tai Chi routine and drinking my herbal tea here and we'll get going. Just kidding, it's coffee. So the Jawbone Canyon BLM area, which is where we're camping, uh, it's been nice. I recommend it. It's basically uh, a paved road, an uh, asphalt road that travels east and west off of Highway 14, which is north and south. And so it's fairly easily, well, it's actually very easily accessible. And you just drive up the, this paved road that you can hopefully see in the background here. And there's campsites along both sides. Uh, and there's quite a few campsites, I would say 20, 25, maybe 30 or more. You could probably shoe, shoehorn yourself in. Uh, just about anywhere that you see if it's busy uh, and they, the sites were plenty of big sites if you want to camp as a group i saw lots of groups camped with three four five trailers and there's also smaller sites that are good for uh, just one one camp uh, one campground one trailer all right so here's some thoughts on finding new places to camp new places to adventure it's my preference to um, have it all set all ready to know exactly where i'm going know that it's going to be a cool place and have it all dialed in because that makes me the most comfortable and reduces the anxiety. But I also realize that that's not the way to find cool new places. And so what I've learned over uh, time and what I think is really solidified in my mind uh, planning for this trip is I came to a new place and I didn't know exactly where the coolest spot would be to camp. And I was worried about finding the new place and uh, finding the best place. And it's hard when you're towing the trailer to, to go in unknown places. And so what I've done is I've given my, myself permission to camp in maybe not the coolest place but to then be able to check the area out and kind of do a reconnaissance and, and scout out where the cool places are. And that way, uh, if it is a cool place and I come back again, I know exactly where to go. And that works well for me since I do most of my weekend camping within a three or four hour radius from my house. If I find a cool place, it's easy to come back uh, another time to do camping. And so uh, I think that's a good realization I've made for the way the style that I camp, give, my permi give myself permission to not find the coolest place uh, right away. And when I say not the coolest place, I mean, I would consider this not the coolest place, but as you can see, it's pretty awesome. It's nice and desolate out here. Today, we're going to go scout the area. We're going to find the coolest place to go if there is a better place and then uh, come back again another time. So we're just driving, we found a, uh, a lot of flies right here. We found a uh, pretty well maintained, I think it's a county road that cuts through Jawbone Canyon. And we've been driving on it for maybe close to an hour. And I'm not sure where it goes or what it leads to, but this is probably the most scenic area I found. It's just absolutely beautiful with the, the flowers and the plants and the rocks and the hills and the, the colors and the textures, it's, it's amazing. around camp a little bit here uh, it's been a, a good camp we're right next to the road which I don't mind it doesn't bother me the traffic doesn't bother me and hasn't been that much and we're also in the off-road vehicle recreation area which is fine it hasn't been obnoxious or even constant it's just been every once in a while somebody will come through uh, on a motorcycle or whatnot we're also right next to you can probably see in the background we're right next to this pipeline it's a water pipeline that feeds Los Angeles and so that's pretty cool. I didn't even know this thing existed. Aqueduct maybe is what it's called.
All right, so there was a lot of wind noise in this shot, so I'm just gonna recap what I said. I was talking about the battery usage and the battery state of charge. We are running it down about 10% state of charge every day. That's running the normal appliances, lights, and water pump and whatnot, and also watching maybe four or five hours of movies every day, and so I was happy with that. I was running the generator for about an hour every morning, and that was uh, bringing it back up, uh, the state of charge back up into the 90s. On the subject of generators and off-grid power, um, I want to talk about the bonded plug I use here in the generator. <clears throat> and I had a concern, and I know a lot of people have a concern, when they put an EMS system in their trailer, a hardwired electronic management system. A generator doesn't operate well with the EMS system because the generator produces what's known as an open ground, and the EMS system reads that as an open ground and won't allow any power into the trailer or the RV. And so the solution to that is to use... Uh, what's known as a bonded plug. Here's the bonded plug I made my own. All I did was I simply picked up this plug from Lowe's, it was a couple bucks, and I used a jumper wire inside and I connected the uh, ground terminal to the neutral terminal and then closed it back up. It plugs in and that tells the generator uh, or makes it seem like the generator is putting out normal power. The EMS no longer reads the open ground. So as far as camping in OHV off highway vehicle areas, this has been great. It hasn't felt super crowded. Uh, there's trails on both sides of the paved road for the off highway vehicles to use. And there's been a few that have come right by our campsite, but they've been real respectful. They slowed way down uh, so they're not kicking up dust or a bunch of noise when they come by our campsite. And it's not happened very often. Usually they're off in the distance. And so it's been great. It hasn't bothered me at all. And it's it's an OHV area, it's their area, so of course, uh, if you don't want the, to deal with the OHV, the off-highway vehicles, then I, I would recommend not camping here, especially on the weekend. Um, it hasn't felt super busy, I don't know if that's because it was forecasted to be a little windy, or because there was some, uh, Highway 14 to get in here was closed in a section because of some brush fires, but it, uh, it's, been, it's been nice. Uh, the off-highway vehicles haven't bothered me at all. Uh, the normal BLM rule, the 14-day camping limit applies. There's nobody to check in with. There's no fees to pay or anything. The price is, the price is right, free 99, 100% free. And there's no real designated areas. I did see a couple areas that were designated with, like you know, campsite signs, but there was no structures on them or anything. It was just you know, a flat area with a little fire pit, which is basically what what we have as well. And so you just find a place that looks good and you camp there. Uh, 14 day limit, nobody to check in with, no fees. It's been awesome. Finally, finally the wind died down so I could get a decent take. I think this is the best audio I'm probably gonna have of this. This whole video, the wind is dead silent right now. I had a pretty good shot before, but the dang trash pile that those guys left uh, up by the road was right in the back of the shot. I didn't realize it when I was shooting it. Dang, trash and uh, used a fire extinguisher. I'm gonna pay David $2 to clean it up when he's uh, up and at him. This cable lock I'm using to secure the generator is made by Bolt Locks. The cool thing about this is you order it for the type of car you have and it comes and you stick your car key in there and it automatically codes to your car key lock and so you don't have to carry around a bunch of keys. You can just use a factory key from your car to 
open up the lock. I have one for the generator here, the cable lock. I also have a couple padlocks and I have a lock for the hitch. I should have thought about it and remembered to take the hitch off the truck before I went exploring off-road. Yesterday it got uh, pretty dirty. I'm gonna have to clean all that off before I and regrease it before I hitch up the truck today. Also for uh, any of you Ford Super Duty drivers, you have a hard time getting your safety chains in these small little cutouts here. I got some two inch shackles and the two inch shackles go on there and then the safety chains hook right in, it works like a dream. And then when I'm not towing, I take the, the shackles off and I keep them in the toolbox in the back of my truck, it works great. All right, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Logan and the Hobo RV Adventure Channel show. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you like the content, please subscribe. It's free and it helps me out. And we'll see you in the next video.